Hi, my name is Judith Reedy, um, and I am so glad that uh, you came back. Uh, now I'm going to be talking about oil paint and, uh, and the solvents and the mediums that you will need for this class. Um, I, I do have an article that I'll be sending along that talks a little bit more extensively about uh, oil paint, but for this class, because we're going to be painting in a short time, we're really not going to be doing a lot of um, uh, layers or glaze layers upon layers. We're going to be doing more wet into wet, and if we do paint, uh, if we do, I'll explain as we go on. But so anyway, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more. Uh, first of all, I want to talk to you about the type of paint. We want to use oil paint if you're going to choose to use oil paint. Not m water mixable oils, but oil paint. And the oil paint uh, I want you to select. Uh, you don't have to buy all the colors in the world, but what I want you to have is in the, and I have my chart up here. I want you to check the chart up. Uh, there, I want you to have a warm and a cool of yellow, blue, and red. So, for example, uh, and when I say a uh, warm or a cool, I'm going to say, for example, I have cadmium yellow lemon pure. Or you may have Hansel yellow. But it's a what would be termed a cool yellow, whereas, for example, a cadmium yellow medium is a warm yellow. And uh, as you look at the chart, you can see how they're indicated, warm and cool. But those are the two types of yellow. And I'll explain why I want you to have a warm and cool, because uh, of, it'll give you pure colors when you mix. So uh, when we have this warm and cool. The same with uh, red. You can have a uh, cad red, which would be considered a warm red, or a pyro red, which would be warmer. Or, and then you're going to also need uh, a cool red, which could be uh, alizarin crimson, or it could be quinacridone uh, magenta, which you will see on your chart that I'm giving you some suggestions. But uh, the cooler colors tend to be closer to the blue, and the warmer colors are closer to, the warmer reds are closer to the yellow. Now the other color, now so far we've talked about yellow, warm yellow and a cool yellow, a warm red and a cool red. Uh, we're gonna also talk about a uh, warm blue and a cool blue. Uh, a warm blue is phthalo blue because it's closer to yellow. It has a little more green in it. It's, it's just more towards that direction. Whereas like a, an ultramarine blue is a cool blue. So those would be the types of colors I would like you to start with in terms of colors. Now I want a neutral uh, which is in the middle of the color wheel, and uh, it's a naturally occurring. One would be either burnt sienna, which dries quickly, which is one of the reasons why I'm recommending it. Another one that you could try is the uh, transparent red oxide. They're both in that same general area. Uh, it's very important that this is sort of a neutral, warm uh, color. It's great for uh, landscape paintings um, or for doing uh, portraits. The other uh, colors you're going to need in there is uh, black. And so there's several kinds of black, but I recommend chromatic black. You could also use uh, ivory black or Mars black, but I really recommend chromatic black, which is from uh, Gamblin. And uh, titanium white. I want to recommend as well. Not zinc white, but titanium white. And I generally recommend that you buy a larger white because you use white so often to mix with other colors that it actually is used up a lot more than your other colors, especially if you're like making tints of a color. Now, let me
me get, talk to you a bit why I am going to suggest a warm and cool of each color. For example, have you ever tried to make a really nice purple? A really clean, bright purple. And you took your red, cad red, and you mixed it with your ultramarine, and you got this kind of murky, uh, dead color. Well, part of the reason is that you are you have some yellow. This this warmer red uh, or red has some yellow in it, and you're mixing all three colors in the color wheel in together. And when you do that, you end up neutralizing the colors and they become more toned down, which is if you want to do that, that is something that you can do. But if you want a nice, clean, brilliant purple, you're going to want to use like ultramaroon with its neighboring red, either magenta, quinacridone magenta, or alizarin crimson. In the class, I will explain more about why certain mixtures are uh, tend to uh, be brighter and others tend to be more and, and brighter and more intense, whereas others tend to get really dead looking. And it really has to do with whether you select a warm or cool color and a neighboring color um, and how you mix them together. But now that's on the color in the paints. Now we have what's called solvents in uh, and uh, mediums in oil paint. And the main solvent is, uh, is, is turpentine, but I like to use either an odorless turpentine like um, Gamzel, which is a product of Gamblin, but uh, there are many, as long as it's an odorless uh, turpentine, uh, that's what I recommend that you get. And uh, you should have it in, uh, I like to have it in two containers one for cleaning your brushes and one for mixing with your paint because uh, they tend to get a little, um, your, your paint can get a little murky if you don't have two uh, containers for your solvent. The other thing uh, is your medium. Now, the typical medium that's used is linseed oil, but because we're working in a short day, uh, only two days, I'm going to recommend either Galkid or Liquin. Liquin, I believe, is a product of Winsor Newton, and Galkid is a product of Gamblin, and it is accelerates drying time with your oil. So if you want to put a layer on and then, you know, thinly, and you put the Galkid as, a, as the medium, it will dry much quicker than if you use linseed oil. So that's one of the things that I would want you to make sure to get uh, that type of uh, uh, medium for you, a dryer. And uh, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. And uh, I hope that if you have any more questions, uh, you feel free to ask. I do have an article in my the handout that I give you talking about when you put layers of uh, of oil on top of each other, you need to have different mixtures that are pretty proportionately fat over lean. But because we're working in, in a two-day period, that is not so much a problem. And so I'm not going to go into detail in this class uh, and in this session uh, presentation. But I think um, you understand it's very important that you have a warm and cool of each color, red, yellow, and blue. We can mix greens, we can mix oranges, we can mix purples with those colors, so you don't need to buy those. And um, looking forward to next talking to you about brushes. <laughs>